Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lawson Learning. In today's episode, we're going to focus on the topic of lock, how lockdown has impacted our mental health significantly. So, lockdown, when I say lockdown, I think I understand, you probably understand what I mean. It means the coronavirus lockdown that has been imposed upon basically the entirety of humanity because of the um, measures taken to combat coronavirus and it's spread around the world. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about the mental health impacts that this would have on people anywhere around the world, really, um, because this never have we seen a case in human history, well actually we have maybe before, but let's just say we haven't seen a case where so many people have been forced to stay isolated inside their own homes for such a lengthy period of time that it almost becomes unbearable. I mean, I say, I'm trying to think of another time in human history which I know of in which that has happened. Maybe it has happened in terms of people being in prisons before or people being put into camps before or things like this. But generally, I can't think of a time in human history where people have been forced to stay inside their homes. Maybe during previous plagues during hu human history, perhaps people have been forced to stay inside their homes, but certainly not in my lifetime. Um, and this is has been a shock to me and, and, and also to everyone else living on this planet. And so I just thought it might be a good idea to maybe give some advice um, through video about how to deal with the challenges of mental health during this lockdown period. So um, one of the first points I have is that is just describing how significantly this lockdown has influenced our mental health. So for example, we can no longer see people face to face. So I can't talk to you now in person the way I'm talking to you through this video. You know, I'd, I'd have to wear a mask like this. And, um, you know, you'd see me talking like this, but you wouldn't see any of the facial expressions that I have or any, you know, maybe you'd see my eyes and see some of the facial expressions there, but you wouldn't get as much of the meaning from my conversation as if I was not wearing a mask and I was talking to you using um, facial expressions with my mouth and with my nose and with my chin and with with my uh with my cheeks and with all these kind of different uh, and with my dimples and with all these different kind of uh, facial expressions that that I would normally convey socially and um, this may seem like a minor point but actually having the ability to see other people's facial expressions is a part of how we socialize with each other. It's a part of how we communicate with each other as human beings. And this, and not having access to this, I mean, it, it's good if you have like a close family member or, or, or a friend who you see anyway without a mask, and that's quite good. But some people don't have this, and they're they're forced to go and go through this lockdown period without ever seeing anyone, anyone's mouth or anyone's nose. And I know this sounds, it sounds silly, doesn't it? It sounds minor, but it, it, it is a huge part of social interaction. It's something you lose. Um, and so, you know, that's why this, that, that's one reason why it might have a significant impact on our mental health. Another reason is staying indoors has kept us physically apart from other people. So including our friends, this includes, uh, you know, people who we might normally have spent time with before the lockdown, we now can no longer see. You know, in, in many places we can no longer meet up with more than two people, 
or whatever. And so like that, this, this lack of social interaction, of course, again, causes, can cause uh, severe damage to our mental health. Um, also, we're forced to spend more time alone in our own company. Now, actually, this is quite bad, but at the same time, I'd also say this is a good thing because um, even though we're forced to face this inner void within ourselves when we're spending so much time alone, um, we're also we also learn to accept ourselves a lot more and to come to terms with who we really are. So um, we're also forced to confront any mental issues we have, um, such as, you know, stress or other emotions such as depression or uh, any other emotions like anger, anything, you know, we're forced to confront it and because because we can't socialise and, you know, the, this, I mean, I myself am an introvert, mostly. But of course, introversion and extroversion are a spectrum and I do have my extrovert tendencies and I do have those times when I do want to go out and see people when I, and I can't, you know, I can't go out to bars like everyone else, you know, in the evenings because they're all shut down here in Hong Kong anyway. That's what the rule is um, in the evenings. So like it is quite difficult that um, and, um, you know, as, as a result, you're forced to spend uh, much more time on your own facing your own emotional issues and your own emotional problems. Um, so um, this is another significant aspect of how the lockdown has impacted our mental health. And one last thing, you know, is not only our emotions we're forced to confront, well, one, emo one particular emotion we're forced to confront is our loneliness. Um, we're forced to come face to face with our own loneliness and learn to embrace solitude. So when we embrace solitude, we embrace who we are in this moment. And there is nothing else. There's nothing else to explore. All it is is just us being with us and there is nothing else, you know. So this can be very challenging for most of us as we're so used to spending so much time with other people. So how do we maintain mental clarity during the lockdown period? Well, one of the first things I would say is that you need to create a routine for yourself. So make sure that you're doing similar things every day, that you have a set routine for yourself every day, particularly every morning when you wake up. So say you want to wake up at 8 a.m., you wake up at 8 a.m. and then maybe you, you know, write it down. The key, the key thing is to write it down. I don't just write, you can write it down with, you know, a pen and a bit of paper and just write down your ideas. I also like to just type it up on the computer um, myself um, using OneNote or some commonplace book and write down what you want to do each day. So wake up at 8 a.m., um, drink some water, you know, go to the toilet, do all these basic things, brush your teeth, that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, make sure you have habits in there which you want to complete. So, for example, meditation, uh, yoga, and uh, maybe you also want to um, uh, have a healthy breakfast or something, yeah? So make sure you have all those things in there. Speaking of meditation, meditation is perhaps the biggest piece of advice I would give you for how to maintain mental clarity during lockdown. It, it still sounds strange and it, it sounds woo-woo and it sounds hippie to a lot of people, doesn't it? Meditation, the idea of, of, you know, sitting by yourself 
for 20 minutes. You know, many people associate it with chanting or doing some spiritual pose or something like this. That's not really what meditation is. Meditation is just being. Being is the opposite of doing. So when you're doing something, most of us spend our, our time doing something. Even if we think we're doing nothing, we're actually doing something because thinking is an act of doing. Yeah, thinking is an act of doing. Yeah, I'll repeat that, thinking is an act of doing. So even if you are physically doing nothing, if you're thinking, you are still doing something, yeah? So the whole point of meditation is, is you simply just sit there, like you're sitting on the couch or something and you just do nothing. You just breathe because you have to breathe and you breathe naturally, you don't force the breath. You just let yourself breathe in and out. And you do that for about 20 minutes. Go on your phone. You, most people's smartphones have a timer these days and set the timer for 20 minutes. Then sit in a, it could be a cross-legged position on, on some comfortable cushion on the floor or even like here, just in your chair and just sit for 20 minutes. See if you can do that. And what you'll notice is, is that the mind will absolutely hate it if you try that. The mind will come up with all sorts of excuses like, oh, this is just a waste of time. Oh, I feel terrible. Oh, I need to do something. Oh, I'm hungry. I need to eat something. Whatever you do, just push through it until you finish that 20 minutes. And notice what happens if you can do this, because it's difficult, but if you can do this, if you can sit there for 20 minutes doing nothing, what you'll realize is, is that you don't actually need anything. So you don't actually need the comfort of eating food. You don't need the comfort of watching some YouTube video or, or anything. You don't need it. What you need is just to be present with yourself in the moment. That's all you need. There's nothing else you could ask, you could have asked for. Um, it's the strangest sensation. Never, I can promise you, I've been meditating now for six years, five or six years, and never have I completed a meditation and thought that was a waste of time. Hand on heart, never in my six years of meditating, and I've been meditating every day, pretty much. Some days, many days I've missed, but most days I meditated. I can say to you, all those meditations have been worth it and more. That's, that's how important meditation is for maintaining mental clarity during a time like lockdown. So I definitely, you know, put that in there as one of your things. Another major technique for maintaining mental clarity during lockdown is practicing body movement. This could be any kind of body movement, whether it be yoga, Hatha yoga specifically, um, or physical exercise, or Tai Chi, or anything that gets your body moving. I quite, I quite like physical exercise, um, fitness, I do HIIT workouts, H-I-I-T, -H high intensity interval training workouts. Um, I've recently been following videos online of uh, HIIT workouts and they've been particularly good for, 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 for example, for, for getting through depression. Um, if you're depressed, the lockdown is a particularly challenging period, aka me, because I'm depressed and going through the lockdown has, has been a particularly challenging period for me. But doing exercise has been fundamental to getting through that. So I would definitely recommend doing that. 
I, t I say that because, you know, doing something like physical exercise releases a drug called serotonin um, in the brain. Um, and it releases endorphins as well. Um, you know, it it may well be the case that, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm no scientist, but doing physical exercise feels as though it releases as much serotonin as it does an antidepressant drug. You know, it, it's that much serotonin. It, it, it really does make you feel so much better after doing even just 15 minutes of an indoor workout. You don't need to... Forget about going to the gym. You can if you want, and that's great, but just doing indoor aerobics, just things like this, getting your heart pumping, getting your body moving, get, getting a sweat on, this kind of thing will increase your clarity of mind, actually. I always feel so much clearer in my mind after doing physical exercise. It's as though, God forbid, God forbid, the body and mind are connected, you know, as though they're connected. As if the mind didn't operate separate from the rest of the body, as, you know, the Western paradigm would have us believe. One thing they actually do appreciate in the East and in Eastern traditions is that the mind and body are intimately connected. And that's why I was in the park the other day in Hong Kong and I saw someone just practicing Tai Chi. Just doing various body movements. Tai Chi is where you do various body movements. You know, I don't quite know how it works exactly. I think it's to represent various animals or insects or so on. But it's just, it's about the flow of energy through movement. And I saw someone who was doing this in the park and I was really I really admired them for this you know like I, I was really amazed that they could do this so um, because I, I don't see any of it in the UK where I was where I grew up you know I, I didn't see anyone practicing Tai Chi people would have been laughed at if they practiced Tai Chi in the park in the UK you know but in Hong Kong and in other East Asian countries you know, like China or wherever, you know, it, it's seen as uh, commonplace. You know, it, it, it's not it's not looked down upon. Rather, it's looked it, it's looked up to. You know, doing Tai Chi in the park, um, it, it, and as a result, they benefit with a much higher level of mental health because they realise the body mind connection, which unfortunately in many western countries we've forgotten about so there's another there's another point to remember okay how else do we maintain mental clarity during lockdown well phone people up so like i mentioned about socializing obviously during lockdown there's a lack of socializing so you know phone people up don't just message them don't just send them a text on whatsapp or wechat or facebook you've actually got to phone them up because and the reason I say that is because when you phone someone up you actually use your voice and they use their voice and it's more organic it, it flows more when you're texting someone it's more you have to think about what you're gonna say and then maybe you can edit what you what you're going to say or things like this and you you think about it and it's too logical if if you have a phone conversation with someone or if maybe a, maybe a video call is even better you can actually interact with them as if you were interacting with them face to face obviously it's not the same but during lockdown desperate times call for desperate desperate measures and this is the best we've got so um, just talking to someone face to face the way I'm talking to you now give someone a video time face call something like that that's a really good way to help you stay sane during this incredibly confusing period in human history um, journal 
is another is another piece of advice I have for you. You know, get a notebook like this. Get a pen. Yeah. I've scribbled all sorts of notes around here. Yeah. You can you can write anything you want, do drawings, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. I, I use these actually for my lessons. I'm an English teacher, so I write down some student feedback in these journals and things. You can write anything you want to. Anything you want that's going to uh, get what's in here onto there, onto, onto paper. Yeah? It's almost like doing a mind dump, you know, <laughs> to put it in that way. It's, it, it's a bit like everything in here collects over time and if you don't get it out either through speaking or through writing it it stays there this is how I feel about ideas anyway I I feel like ideas don't just go when ideas go in there they stay they linger around and they stay there so the more ideas coming in I somehow need to get them out you know garbage in garbage out you need to you need you need to get out those ideas get them write them down yeah and you'll find that you do feel a lot freer after having written a diary. Um, I, this always reminds me of Anne Frank, because I read the Anne Frank diaries about a year ago. I think it was about half, or half a year ago. Um, and I really admire Anne Frank, because she... I mean, talk about lockdown. She was in an attic during World War Two for years. I can't exactly remember how many years. Four or five years or something like that. That is insane. And she managed to, you know, all, all she needed was a pen and a bit of paper. And she was able to write a diary which would go on to become famous around the world. And it's, it's, it's certainly unfortunate that she didn't live past the end of the war to, 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 to experience that. But you know what? She lived on through her writings and she lived on through everything she expressed in that journal so you know if, if there's any testament to the power of journaling check out Anne Frank's diaries you know and, and, and read those or if not if you just want to get journaling then get journaling and it will just help you to express some of the things you're worried about some of the things that are on your mind, some of the things that you can't tell your friends because you, because of social distancing, you can't meet up with your friends or whatever because of lockdown. Instead of telling them, tell your journal instead. You know? You can do that. Um, read. Read lots of books. I like to read lots of books about self-improvement, self-actualization, self-help, and life in general. Um, I love learning new things. That's why I've called this particular series of episodes Lawson Learning or, you know, learn, it's, it's learning about new things. I just love exploring new things. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet, but I know for sure that I love learning new things. And so that's why I, that, that's what makes me passionate. That's what makes me continue to share this information with you. Um, so keep reading, keep reading Books are gold mines of wisdom. Um, you'll find every time I read a book, I find something new that I've never, I never considered before. Um, so make sure you keep up a good reading habit. Okay, and learn that you cannot escape from yourself fundamentally. So you can't, I am, say, say me, I am here, I'm in this body and I'm stuck in this room. You know, I can't really, I could go out, I guess, but I, you can't really, during day, today's day and age, during lockdown, you can't really go anywhere in most places. So you are very much forced to confront yourself. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode. Um... What you have to accept is that you can't escape from yourself. And so instead of trying to search for external distractions and instead of trying to search for maybe videos or maybe 
even social interactions, even talking to other people, even anything, anything that's outside of this body is a distraction. Yeah? That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means it's a, it's a, it's a distraction from looking within. Yeah? So when you are forced to confront yourself, as in times like this, you may as well take the opportunity to just dive into yourself through through practices like meditation and it may seem terrifying especially if you're feeling like shit and you're feeling really bad about yourself and you're feeling like oh i couldn't possibly look a bit up within myself i just anything anything to distract me from the terror that lies within what you'll realize is, is if you just spend time with yourself and you dive into yourself a bit like diving into a cold pool you know you just got to do it you just got to go for it if you do it then you'll realize it's not as bad as you thought and that actually you're a fountain of creativity and wisdom and actually you you're more powerful than you thought and that you can deal with the emotions within sometimes the emotions seem so powerful that you need to distract yourself with some addiction or something to prevent yourself from confronting the emotion within but actually once you face the emotion within you realize that it's not as bad as you initially thought and that you can keep going further and further and further within and that you won't die in fact what will happen is the opposite instead of dying you'll actually feel more alive from looking within so don't be afraid to do that finally before I finish we're now running into 30 minutes I didn't know this episode would go on so long, but before we finish, I I have a final piece of advice, and this is just get out into nature. You know, even though there's lockdown, you're still allowed to go to places where there aren't that many human beings. Go to the forest. Go to the park. Go to the seaside. I went to the, the seaside the other day and just feeling and smelling the fresh sea air rejuvenated me completely for that week and got me ready for the week ahead. Um, there's, a, there's a forest near here in Hong Kong called Eagles, well, there's a hiking trail um, in a forest called Eagles Nest and I go there quite often and it's 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 very serene and it, and and just being there allows me to connect with what is and it allows me to connect with just sitting there on the rocks even being pelted with a with the occasional monsoon or whatever it doesn't matter but I I, I I'm amongst I'm amongst plants and animals which don't have an agenda particularly against me, which I don't feel have a bias. You know, when, when you're when you're when you're amongst society and you're in and amongst other people and you're in the city, it feels as though everyone has an agenda. They want something from you. They want money. They want uh, they want attention. They want fame. They want they want something, right? And that's not everyone, but some people do. And, and, and you do feel as though everyone is trying to grab your attention when you're in the middle of human society. Because it's very low consciousness. And it's, it, it's, it, it always appeals to your base desires for food, money, sex. You know, these very basic desires and things. That's what 
modern day society appeals to and there's nothing wrong with that that's just where our society is at but if you want to really connect with your authentic self and who you really are go to the forest because there aren't going to be adverts appealing to your base natures there there aren't going to be people trying to sell you crap no there's going to be when you go into the forest and when you go into nature there's going to be the elements there's going to be wood there's going to be the smell of pine trees there's going to be rivers and streams running down the mountain there's going to be insects there's going to be grasshopper the sound of grasshoppers there's going to be the sound of birds chirping away that's all you're going to experience and there's going to be fresh air which you can breathe in you know where you don't need a mask because you there's no other people around you're not going to infect anyone with some virus it's fine you know you're going to you're 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 alone in nature and that's one of the best experiences you can have during the current time and then you can you know after going hiking you can you know put your mask back on take safety precautions go go back into into society again go back into the lockdown but at least you'll have that memory in there of when you were in nature when you were completely authentic and when you were who you were so that's where that's what I'm going to leave you with for now am I going to say anything about whether this lockdown is a good idea or not, I don't know. I don't know what. I'm not. I don't work for the government. I don't work for the health service. I'm not a. Do I'm no doctor. But I am a human being, and I do know what makes us mentally sane. I do, and I do have an idea about what what we can do to get us through some of the difficulties all of us are experiencing in this time and this is no easy time you probably know that everyone knows that but if you just take it bit by bit day by day think of little victories do do one thing I've suggested maybe or just do whatever you think is right just but just do it right do one little thing that you think is gonna make you feel a little bit saner during this time and that's a huge victory because then that will lead to the next thing you do to have more mental clarity and then that will lead to the next thing you do to have even more mental clarity and then that will do to the, that will lead to the next thing you do which will create even more mental clarity for yourself so keep doing that and good luck i'll see you again soon. This is George from Lawson Learning. I'm signing out. See you soon.